Becky Martin. Kia ora, Mr Speaker, and can I welcome you and everybody else back to the House, wish them a happy new year, because for many of us it's been the first opportunity to gather together again. Um, it's certainly not the opportunity that many of us, um, many of us are not just returning to work, we are returning to Parliament. Um, and it, it has been an interesting start to the year. For myself, I came back to work on the 6th of January and um, into my offices in Walkworth, where case after case after case is walking into my office because um, there seems to be some difficulty with members of the public actually gaining some action from many of the, um, many of the government MPs. There seems to be that if your problem doesn't quite fit the policy direction of the national government, then your local representative is not necessarily going to stand up for you. And I think that's a problem we've got happening. That is a problem we have happening in our democracy, Mr Foster Bell. It's true, it is true where I am, Mr Foster Bell, and many of the other electorate officers of New Zealand First are finding the same thing, that, they are, that members of, our, of the public in our areas are going to see their sitting MPs and being declined assistance it shocks and horrifies us. So I'm, I'm assuming that it is not all MPs that sit on the government benches, but I'm telling you that it is becoming more and more common coming into my office, and it is something that we need to address in this country. We are all paid, no matter what party we are with, to help the people of New Zealand when they have an issue with a government department. And I would hope that no matter what the politics of any person who walks into any MP's office, they will not be declined assistance merely because the assistance they need may not fit a certain box that is the policy of the current government. Mr Speaker, the one, of the, one of the other reasons why I'm looking forward to 2016 is that, as uh, Deputy Leader Ron Mart outlined in his contribution, New Zealand First has a particularly strong caucus currently, a sp particularly strong and cohesive caucus. Unlike the members of the National Party backbench, the New Zealand First caucus members have several portfolios each, and every single portfolio that they have, they work hard to make sure that they are up to date, upskilled, and that they are ready in every opportunity to make sure that they hold this government to account. In every portfolio area, in every portfolio area, these, the, the New Zealand First caucus members hold this government to account. And I, I don't know where the quote came from, but there is a quote, and I'm sure it's by some very famous politician, that said that when you're, when when your, um, the opposition to you in a debate starts shouting um, personal insults, it's because they've lost all political argument. And I think what we can see in contribution after contribution, and you probably will see it in the National Party members' contribution after I sit down, but there will then become a personal attack. And that is because, sir, they know this government is losing its grip. This government is losing its grip. We saw it at Waitangi. We saw it in a Prime Minister that decided to celebrate our National Day by going to a sports game instead of attending anywhere, anywhere in this country. He could have gone to a commemorative service on the 6th of February, but he chose not to. He chose to go nowhere but to a, to a football match, to a football match. This is the gentleman that leads our country, that supposedly represents the whole of the nation. And while I totally accept that there was mixed messages and confusion given to him up at, at uh, Waitangi, so on the 5th he chose not to go, why on earth on the 6th did he choose not to take any service anywhere to acknowledge that treaty in the history of this country? It exists, it was signed, it has his place to acknowledge it, but he chose to go nowhere. And I think that is an indication, New Zealand, that this government is losing its grip. Northland was a beautiful indication last year that this government is losing its grip. That this government misread Northland so much, it thought that it could dazzle Northlanders after 70 years of National Party MPs being their representatives and getting absolute jack nothing. They drove up there and crown car after crown car after crown car, thinking that they could bedazzle Northland. Northland was not bedazzled, and it's spreading. I think that's really interesting. It's spreading. 
Every, there's region after region now. It's actually starting from the north and it's moving down. This government is losing its grip. And then we have, we have Mr Joyce go up. 70 years, again, I'd say, of a National Party MP representing the north, and within months of the Right Honourable Winston Peters being the representative for Northland, Mr Joyce is up there with a 58-point a plan. No funding behind it, but a 58-point plan to de deliver for Northland. Now, isn't that odd that none of the other National Party MPs that represented them for such a long, for decades, was able to get that? Was able to get that, but the Right Honourable Peter, Winston Peters, within months, manages to make sure that this government gets the message, gets the message that the Northland has been so neglected that it needs to be looked at. And uh, the Right Honourable John Key likes to make likes to make jokes. I think it's sort of an urban type of a joke, really, an inner city slicker joke that the Right Honourable Winston Peters doesn't spend much time in his electorate. Now, Mr. Mr. Key, Mr. Key, of course, opens himself up to criticism because, of course, he never goes anywhere near Helensville. He does one public meeting closed to people during an election year, and the rest of the time they never see him. However, Mr. Peters and the New Zealand First has offices in Walkworth in Dargaville, in Kerry Kerry, in Kaitaia and in Whangarei, and they hate it. And they hate it. Here we go, New Zealand. The moon is coming down. Northland is the flagship for the country. And next will be Whangarei. Next will be Whangarei, Mr Reti. And then down into Rodney. Then down into Rodney, Mr Mitchell. And on we go down the country. On we go down the country. But there's been some other things that have been very interesting, and I'm going to look forward to it. Fungaruru. Fungaruru. I am going to look forward to seeing how this minister creates commercial negotiations to get back a farm that cost millions upon millions of dollars of New Zealand taxpayers' money and after she signed a contract that had no clause in it that if you fail, taxpayers get their assets back. Commercial negotiations now being entered into by lawyers and the Ministry of Education to try and recoup what anybody who would read a contract that you're paying for with other people's money might have made sure there was a clause in. It smacks of Novapay. It smacks of Novapay. And the same minister signed Novapay. What is it? What is it about this minister and contracts? What is it about this government and contracts that it doesn't seem to realise that if it fails, have an out clause. Figure out how to get out just as well as you jump in. It's not your money. It's the New Zealand public's money. There must be a way back. And for the minister to suggest, I was pleased at the select committee this morning, that the Ministry of Education was able to outline quite clearly that the statements that the minister has made that the uh, Whangaruru assets would go into the disposal process, just like state schools did, is a farcical, erroneous statement. Absolutely erroneous, and it is misleading. It misleads all parties. So I'm pleased that the uh, Ministry of Education was able to clarify that today. I'll be looking forward to the budget, the 2016-2017 20, the 20, uh, budget, because, Mr Key, because, Mr Key, there was a member's bill supported by the national government that promised a budget coming 2017-2018 for grandparents raising grandchildren. Grandparent Mr Key looks a bit confused, perhaps we'll talk to Paula about it later, but clothing allowances for children and unsupported, um, orphans and unsupported children. This budget, 1617, should show the four-year projections going on, going on, and that will show whether this government will keep its word for those grandchildren. This government, I hope so, Mr Key, because it's worthy and I hope so, but I'll be watching for this budget and that. There's so many other things that are very interesting. I'm looking forward to the flag referendum because I'm looking forward to Mr Key realising that the country never asked for it, the country doesn't want it, it will lose, and $26 million of taxpayers' money will be gone on a flag referendum. I'm looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to seeing how affordable education will become in New Zealand if this minister finally gets something right around education.